Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And so we welcome you as we come together to celebrate this third Sunday of Easter, wherever you are joining us from. We also bring before the Lord today the many prayer requests we have received from our online portal, so all your intentions are being prayed for at this Mass. We know, friends, that we are weak and that we are sinful, and sometimes we struggle to believe. And so let's, at the beginning of this Eucharist, pause and ask the Lord for mercy, for forgiveness, but most of all, the courage to believe. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let's join in praying together now our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. And let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs, which God 
did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed at the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up, having loosed the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the way of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brethren, I may say to you confidently of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he will set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my lot. Lord, you will show me the path of life. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Lord, you show me the path of life. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Lord, you show me the path of life. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand, bliss forever. Lord, you will show me the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges everyone impartially according to his deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. It was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of the times for your sake. Through him, you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to his name. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking to each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God And all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this has happened. Moreover, Some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But they did not see him. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, And he appeared to be going further. But they were constrained. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. 
And they found the eleven gathered together, and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, in his deceptively small and simple book, Prayer, Our Deepest Longing, Father Ronald Rollheiser tells the story of a Jewish farmer who is out in the fields and who cannot make it back to the village in time for the Sabbath. Upon his return to the village, he is met by an anxious rabbi who tells him that he was careless to be in the fields. And he says to him, I hope you prayed while you were in the field. And the poor, simple farmer responds, I don't know how to pray. So I recited the alphabet over and over and over all night. And I allowed God to write the words with the letters I gave him. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus are bewildered. They are confused. They have been thrown off balance. They are disappointed and they are hopeless. They are struggling to make sense of all that has happened in their world and in their own lives. A stranger comes and walks alongside them. He listens to them. And he writes the words, perhaps, that they cannot write. The stranger's words are many. They are rich on so many different levels. It is an account of companionship. It is an account of care, of enlightening, of helping those disciples through a transition to face the reality where they find themselves. It is helping them deal with their disappointments and their shattered hopes. It's an account of learning something new, having their eyes opened and their hearts opened, and of embracing what now lies before them, something that was very unclear to them at this point. You know, friends, it's an account, it seems to me, that parallels our own journey at the moment. From the reality and rawness of a situation, of lockdown, of COVID-19, to realizing our powerlessness and handing ourselves over to a greater power, to a stranger, to eventually seeing things anew and allowing ourselves to be led to a new place, even if that new place, like those disciples, means going back into the darkness that they left when they entered that house. They were not afraid to go back into that darkness because it's a new darkness. It's an enlightened kind of darkness. It will have struggles of its own, but it is a different kind of darkness. These disciples teach us that like them, we are powerless over the events that are taking place around us. We can try to use our technology and our sophistication to manage things. 
But the truth is, at the end of the day, we are powerless. We have been thrown off balance. We may feel their desperation and their hopelessness as the world, as we know it, changes. And it changes rapidly around us. They teach us, like them, to hand over our powerlessness to someone who, by in large, has become a stranger in our world. One who is not welcome in our social, political, and economic lives. One that in our world we continue to push to the periphery. Our current darkness will only become an enlightened darkness if we embrace our powerlessness and encounter the risen stranger in our midst. But the road to Emmaus is also a picture of how these two disciples move from at the beginning of the story, being totally immersed in themselves and their own problems and their own lives and concerns to at the end of the story, being focused on the greater narrative, the bigger story, on the companions that they had earlier left by themselves, the companions perhaps that they had walked out on. We have constructed a very selfish and consumerist society. We are often first consumers before we are Christians. We don't like to hear that, but that is probably the truth. And now, in this global situation, we have to face the reality. As Pope Francis said a few weeks ago in St. Peter's Square, we all find ourselves adrift in a storm, but we realize that we are in the same boat. The encounter that those disciples have with Jesus gives them new direction. It is an encounter with so much we can say about. In some ways, it's a revolution in their own thinking, in their own way of acting, and indeed in their lives. Our own times and context are perhaps like an Emmaus journey. When we give ourselves over, when we recognize our powerlessness and give it over to a risen stranger, then we begin to walk that journey. If we allow the narrative of the gospel to become the narrative by which we choose to live our lives and in, a, in an enlightened darkness, it will not just end, but the story will continue because it did too for those disciples. There were still many physical struggles ahead as we hear in the Acts of the Apostles. Yet they had overcome their darkest darkness, the darkness of believing that they were in control. I want to suggest that there are three things we can take this week to ponder. And the first is that no matter where we are, the Lord comes to us. There is no confusion or doubt or separation or hardship that is too big for God. God in Jesus will find us on the journey. He walks with us on the journey. And he will walk with us on this journey as we face the collapse and impoverishment all around us from this COVID-19 pandemic. Our challenge is to recognize him on 
this journey with us. The second thing I want to suggest is that Jesus works with what the disciples give him, their disappointments and their dashed hopes. He affirms them by explaining everything in the scriptures about himself. They give what they have, their powerlessness to the Lord. And notice that we are told he gives them everything about himself. And finally, perhaps the most important thing we can do at this time is to be hospitable to others, especially in their pain and suffering. It is the disciples' hospitality that gives Jesus the opportunity to open their eyes. It is their hospitality, their focus on the needs of the stranger that changes everything for them. In this time of COVID-19, our willingness to look towards others, not our own needs or our own security or our own bank balance, but rather looking towards others, will change everything for us. It will give us new perspective. If we are, for example, awakened to the structurally unjust world that we have created, if we become aware of the desperate needs of others in the midst of this crisis, and we engage with that, everything will change for us too. If we, poor and powerless as we are, give God the letters of our lives over and over again, God will write the words as he did for those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. I mean, isn't that what faith is ultimately all about? Consciously giving our lives over to God, who, in the final analysis, writes the words, and not us, as we so often think we do. And so, friends, in this Easter season, I'm going to invite you now to make a profession of faith, but we'll do it by renewing our baptismal promises. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been raised by Christ in baptism so that we may walk in the newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so wherever you are, respond to these questions now as we renew our faith in our God. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. Brothers and sisters, 
This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so now we bring our needs before the Lord. We bring our own needs, but we also bring the needs of the universal church and of all people to God. So the church, that the freedom brought by the resurrection may enable us to live with purpose and help us forsake the fruitless pursuits of power, fame, and wealth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us who feel confused, bewildered, distressed, disappointed, and hopeless at this time, that God, through the risen Christ, may meet us and calm our hearts and give us new insights, vision, and energy like he did for our companions on the road to Emmaus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who pray with us today, that the Spirit will guide our daily journeys and enable us to ease fear, bring hope, and offer encouragement to those whose lives we touch. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the human family, that God will liberate us from the coronavirus pandemic, help us grow in our awareness of the needs of others and build trust and cooperation amongst our people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all healthcare workers, and those in essential services, that God will renew their strength, guide them in their work, and protect them and their families from harm. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are unemployed and hungry, that God will help them to find the resources that they need and open new opportunities for them to use their gifts through our generosity and care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, our God, these are our prayers, the ones we make out loud, but the prayer too that is in the heart of each one of us. Answer them as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. 
Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this, ta- in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light raised to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, 
Buti, our bishop, Duncan, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus, the stranger, who taught us to call God our Father. And so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. And we pray together. Lamb of God, you so take you away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the one they recognized in the breaking of bread. How happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, 
we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.